My fellow St. Lucians, let me remind you that the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women is recognized by the United Nations on November 25th every year. This year's theme is Orange the World and Violence Against Women Now. We invite all citizens to join in the observance of 16 days of activism starting today. Today highlights a huge struggle for equality between men and women in the society. Far too many women and girls in St. Lucia and around the world have fallen victim to this violation of a right to live free of violence. We acknowledge and applaud the work undertaken so far by so many before us to transform lives and promote peace. Things were bad even before the pandemic. Data collected in five Caribbean countries revealed that almost one in two women over the age of 15 years have experienced violence at least once in their lifetime. There is a tendency for an increase in violence against women in crisis settings like the COVID pandemic, where persons are confined to their homes for a longer period. When power is unequal, there will always be the risk of all forms of abuse. Because of shame and fear of blame and criticisms, many women do not report abuse. Consequently, violence against women thrives in silence. A crime victimization survey for St. Lucia revealed that four in every five persons who had experienced sexual harassment were women and nine out of 10 did not report the matter. Given the problem of underreporting, we must consider that violence against women has reached crisis proportions in St. Lucia. We all know of a woman or girl who is experiencing abuse. They may be neighbors or coworkers, family or church members. Violence against women is not a woman's problem. It is a national development issue. Let us stress that women's rights are human rights. Earlier this year, we adopted a package of essential services for women and girls who have been subjected to violence. We are working assiduously to ensure that these services are of good quality and accessible in and out of an emergency. Gender-based violence referral pathways have been developed to assist service providers in safely linking survivors in a competent and timely manner. I congratulate the Interagency Committee for the excellent work done in this area to date, and there are much more to be done to improve justice and prevention services. The Department of Gender Affairs will be strengthened to play a lead role to coordinate the health, social, justice, and policing sectors in dealing with violence against women and girls. Many actors, including government agencies, civil society organizations, the media, the private sector, and other groups will be conducting activities aimed at raising awareness and creating change. But do not let it end there. Combating violence against women and girls is not a one-day affair, but it has to be the business of everyone. Get involved. To the survivors and families of victims of violence against women, your cries 
for justice and not falling on deaf ears. I am committing to you as Minister with Responsibility for Gender Affairs to make it my duty to lobby my government, ministers and parliamentarians, especially the Prime Minister, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, to enact the new Domestic Violence Bill, which will provide greater protection, justice and recourse. I am further committing to improve on the work started to ensure better quality and availability of resources and improve coordination of services for gender-based violence. I end by commending the women and men who are working tirelessly night and day to ensure that survivors of violence have someone they can turn to in the time of need. The workers and volunteers at institutions in the health, policing, justice, and social sectors, all your efforts are recognized and applauded. Continue doing the work. We stand with you as we raise our voices and actions in denouncing all forms of violence against women. Remember, prevention is better than care and cure. Thank you and God bless you.